Many years back, I was a singer in college and I'd lost my voice. About 23 years back, a preacher prayed for me. And the only thing he asked me was, what would you use your voice for? Would you use it to sing for the Lord? My mind screamed out to me and said, yes, I commit to give my voice to the Lord and sing for the Lord. And as he prayed over me, my voice came back. And that started my journey singing for the Lord 23 years ago. Music flows through my fingers when I ask the Holy Spirit to cover me. Singing glory to God that is from your heart, you're talking to Jesus. I'm Sharon Chang. I'm a music teacher. I'm the choir mistress of the 11 AM choir at St. Patrick's Church, Bangalore, India. The first thing that I insist with the choir members at church is that we are here to only sing for the Lord. Not for glory, not for people's praises. That doesn't matter at all and that shouldn't matter. The first thing we are there for is to just sing for the Lord, give our talents to the Lord. The second thing is to depend on the Lord, total and complete dependence on the Lord. That is what I insist with the choir members, especially the young ones, the younger generation who feel I can do everything on my own, which is the way the world thinks. And then I try to tell them and instill in them that no matter what happens, God comes first, our dependence on the Lord comes first. The third thing I insist on is commitment. Commitment is a very big issue nowadays because there are so many distractions of the world and there are so many choices people have in our choir family. I wouldn't say choir members, I would call them family because we are a family. I would insist in the choir family that we focus on our commitment to the Lord and when we say yes to a certain practice, then we make sure that we are there 200%. Oh, weary, oh, comes to dwell in the praises of his people and when you sing and praise the Lord I think that's the most fabulous thing that God chooses I mean he is this great and mighty God but he chooses to come and dwell in the praises of a mortal who is so small and so insignificant yet so important in his eyes and I think that is is the greatest thing about singing for the Lord, that He comes to dwell in our praises, unworthy as we are, 
imperfect as we are, he still, when we open our mouths to sing his praises, his promise says that he is there dwelling in our praises. And that is what sets aside singing for the Lord and singing for the world. When you sing for the Lord, the Lord himself dwells in our praises. What more can we want? In the choir, everyone, everyone's like family, like, like our head Sharon said. From the time everyone comes in to the time they go, everyone's worried about everybody, like how are you going back home? Simple thing is that. The heart is there that they care for each other. And that's the thing that, you know, action speaks louder than words. So even this, this is a group, like Sharon said, everyone's welcome. But those who Lord wants them to remain will remain. And over a time, the Lord builds that bond. Not through words, not through actions, not through anything, but the heart is there for each other. So that's a, a bond that maybe I cannot explain in words, but it's only the Lord's doing in the choir. One thing when singing is there, you don't think of any of the things in the world. Because I am surrounded with His love and affection. So I don't see anything around to distract me. So I feel He is close to me. I need nothing. Because Without his uh, closeness, whatever you ask is also waste. Your heart should say that you need him and you should talk to him so you get the reply within you. That is actually what I always feel. You ask and you get it. People are drawn through various ways to the Lord. Some may be drawn through listening to the word. But if you see, that music is a universal language. And if God has given you that gift, then that gift is to draw people to Him. And if He has given you that gift, He has chosen you specifically for a specific purpose. And that purpose is to draw people back to Him and be a channel of blessing to all those who come in your way. So whenever we need choir members to come or we, we are looking for choir members, the first thing we do is we pray. Lord, who you want to be in the choir, please send them. And who you feel should not be there, then let your will be done. And I tell you, uh, we've seen it every time. When people come, if the Lord chooses for them to be there, they will stay committed. I have uh, choir members who joined me 14 years back, 15 years back, 13 years back, and they have stayed. And it's always been, Lord, we pray to you to send the right people to the choir. There's some of the choir family who are not great singers. But my policy is everybody has a place in the church. The world is very selective in having you belong to them. You know, it's very conditional. They choose you very conditionally. But in the church, in the choir, we cannot do that because everybody has a place in church and everybody has a place in the choir. So whoever comes, whether they have great voices, whether they have not so great voices, we still welcome them and we allow them to sing in the choir. But ultimately, he is the one who decides who stays and who goes. I'm a part of a St. Patrick choir from past 40 years. That is uh, my life from my childhood. Even from my college days, I was throughout in the choir. Even our family also, many, all the members of us are with the choir and the music. So that is my passion. Even till today, we had retreats every now and then. So for every retreat, they made us to sing. And they all knew that I am singing. And every choir of retreats, I was there. So not only that, when you have a retreat and you feel that you are very close to God, automatically your uh, whole thing thinks that other than him we can do nothing. So I've been mostly into prayers, retreats, wherever the mass is there or any gathering of the prayers, I've been there. My life is a choir, singing, going to church. That is my regular life. Now I retired from my service, so I give most importance to attending the masses and going and singing. I like to sing. That is my passion. For me, it is uh, more of 
for sentimental reasons. Anything at Patrick's is like home to me. Just sitting down in one of those benches in St. Patrick's Church just makes me feel at home. Time ticks slower than normal and I can, you know, uh, like sit there for hours. You're used to that. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's like the most com comfortable place ever. And I can sing my heart out and, and it doesn't happen everywhere. For me, I grew up as an anxious person. So anywhere I perform, I first think of the stage. How many people are there? What's the sound like? What's this going to be? What mic are we going to use? How many speakers, monitors do I have in front? What's the wattage of the subs that they have? All that's running in my mind. But when we come to church, there's nothing like that. We can just sing our heart out to the Lord, knowing there are many hearts singing out with you. It's not a solo show. That's the best thing of church music. It's always a community thanksgiving. But if everyone is singing, it's like, wow, this, this is something that's, that's making the angels sing along to us. Singing, such simple singing, and this music can make difference to so many people at the back, because that's what attracted me. If it does to me, I'm sure it can attract many people. I mean, how many lives it can change, how many wonders God can work just through simple tunes called, notes together called music. So that was how I uh, came to know of uh, the choir and all that. But once I think uh, sister went to share in the head, went to her and told her, I've got a boy, you know, make him sing, he's like something like that. And then Sharon, as wholehearted as ever, always welcoming. So that's how I entered and, and you know, many are called, few are chosen, so the chosen ones remain. So that's why dedication and a love for church music never stops. Because it's something more than your mind that connects, it's your heart that connects to it. This choir family at St. Patrick's, it's a very loving family. Everybody looks out for everybody. If somebody is in a problem, the prayer request comes on the group and everybody is praying for that person, for that situation, for that sickness in that person's life. One person who uh, has been an inspiration to not only the us, the older members of the choir, but also to the younger members, like the college-going students also has been uh, Mrs. Connie Lobo. Um, for many years, uh, she took care of her husband who was paralyzed, you know, he had um, an illness. But Connie would come to the choir for practices, 
always with a smile always um, you know with her cheerfulness she touched all our hearts and um, she has been one of the ladies who have inspired all of us to think differently think differently as in think how much more faith we need to have in the lord how much more we need to look to the lord because through her situation we have seen the lord work marvelously marvelously in her lives and one question that comes up is if the lord can work for her so he can work for me too and this is what the young the younger generation is thinking now if the lord can do it for her how much more can he do it for me if i have faith and i trust him totally wholly and completely god wants me to come very close to him that that is how he has made me every time i feel that in any part of my life any failure or success i am always with god and i always praise him i always worship him because i only think that my strength is only jesus christ there was one time that uh, i was on a mission with father jose in the us and i was doing a praise and worship there and there was this lady who was sitting and she had come in with a walker and she very with great difficulty she struggled with that walker and she came and she sat in the chair and the praise and worship started and as we went into the worship session there was a sudden movement of the holy spirit there was a sudden movement of the lord in the place and this lady she just stood up she took her walker she just put it to one side and she came out of her chair and she just started swaying and dancing i was amazed because i was like she could hardly walk in and here she was swaying and dancing for the lord once we went into the praise and the worship and that was an amazing um miracle that opened my eyes and it really humbled me because i was like lord you know this makes me realize that we are actually nothing and he is everything and he can turn everything like that in just a second according to his will Sharon she knows me from my little days I've been running around doing nothing in church so yeah she used to come come and sing come and sing what you doing come and play this that some days I'll run for hockey she'll say no you don't run for hockey you come and play go for hockey on some other day and all this happened these are the stories from from 2004 till now so it it, it just goes on and that's that's the beauty of life so and that's Sharon to me it, it's like more 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 like a more like family like any time anything okay sharon is there like even last uh, last week i wasn't feeling well there's a nice mutton soup that comes home sent by sharon simple examples that you know we we cannot give up on each other and we are from different worlds all of us and when we combine together to work i mean that that makes the journey very interesting to know to get the best of you and you get the best of me put together the get the best of someone and give the best to the lord the first thing that i believe is um, god has given us a free will he has given us a free will to make our choices he brings choices into our lives through different sources through different people uh through our priests through our nuns through our preachers but the choice always remains with us so the choice we make determines what the future will be so he will not push you to make a choice i believe the same so when i see people giving their talents to the world and not to the lord it saddens me and i see it in 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 every situation i see it it saddens me a lot i tell them you know give your talents back to god but again it's the choices they make and we need to respect those choices but one thing i can say when the time comes there's no turning back you have to turn back to the lord and give it all to the lord but everybody has to have their own god experience to be uh, convicted and to believe that they need to come back to the lord and give their talents to the lord and that happens it happened for me it's happened for so many people i know who have been part of the world and realized 
that their time has come where they have to give it back to the Lord and I've seen it happen. So the only thing I, I do is pray for people, intercede for people who have not had their God experience to come back and give that commitment to the Lord. The more you come closer to God, marvelous things can happen in our life. You ask anything from Him, you will be definitely receive that trust you should have and you should go and praise Him. Music is a gift because first of all, there is no boundaries for music between you and me. I've enjoyed most of my time as a keyboardist uh, at St. Patrick's, just watching the conductor do his job and watching everybody sing. All of us come together within those 12 notes of music, within an octave. Anybody in any language, any song can be played on the 12 notes. So music is universal. It, it connects to a, a language that words cannot speak of. To me, it's only the Lord telling me how to play it and the Holy Spirit controlling my hands. Because all these years of playing in church, the Lord blesses me in a way that I cannot tell it again. Because that's why I think music flows through fingers when through my fingers when I ask the Holy Spirit to cover me. And I don't have to think of any language. That's, in short words, the wonder of the Lord's doing in my life. searching for purpose of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.